Okay, this is uh, just very, I'm hoping it's going to be quite mercifully short, a uh, video on gene regulation. Um, so, gene regulation is how a gene is uh, switched on and switched off. And, you know, there are whole university courses on this, so this is a very, very simplistic view. But if we look at this uh, top diagram here, we've got our... Um, Lactose utilization genes, they're actually the ones that are coding, uh, so this is an example. These are coding for um, the enzyme lactase. And you can see that this is yellow operator gene, which allows that coding to be read, and there's a promoter gene that promotes it. And we also then have a regulatory gene now the regulatory gene, when it's switched on, it's producing um, messenger RNA and it's actually coding for another protein. That protein is binding to the operator and making sure that RNA polymerase can't attach to begin that transcription process. So that looks quite complicated, doesn't it? But just remember a regulator gene makes a repressor which acts on the operator and prevents it. So if it's being made, it's preventing the utilisation. In the case of lactose, uh, <coughs> lactase formation, the thing that turns on the enzyme, the transcription and therefore the translation to make lactase is actually the presence of lactose. So here we've got the lactose, so this is it being sort of switched off that's our repressor protein that would attach to the operator and switch that gene off, make sure it can't be read. And lactose actually binds to that and inactivates it so it can't bind to the operator anymore. With the operator free then, the RNA polymerase can bind to the promoter and read along, transcribe that gene uh, which will be translated into the uh, enzyme lactase. So. Again, if they ask about this in an exam, they will have they'll, they'll have to give you some information about it. So you're just looking out for the regulator making a protein which switches a gene off. So that's um, our, sort of how genes are normally regulated. And there are other ways in which the genes are, their expression, if you like, is regulated. And our example, so that one was a bit of an unfamiliar one, but our examples um, come under the umbrella title of epigenetics. And what we're looking at in epigenetics are things that uh, affect the expression of genes i.e. transcription but not the code and this is a really sort of exciting field in genetics at the moment and it could be one of the reasons that we all look different from each other despite sharing you know 99.9% .9 of our DNA code really exciting it's also the way in which in a tissue those cells are sort of switched on and off or certain genes are switched on and off. So for example, you don't want your heart muscle cell churning out insulin. Um, you want it to be churning out you know, myosin and actin to contract the heart and make it into the correct cells. And epigenetics is responsible for that kind of gene regulation, switching on and off genes. So we need to talk about two things. We need to talk about methylation. <coughs> so Hank, who I still love, uh, refers to this as a switch. So what happens in methylation is that a methyl group attaches to cysteine. I'm really hoping you can't hear that animation running in the background. So, methyl group attaches to cysteine and it actually prevents 
genes being translated or transcribed. So the RNA polymerase, when it account encounters these methyl groups, kind of stops, if you like. So that's why uh, Hank refers to it as a switch. It's switching those genes off, which means that the only genes that can be switched on in a cell are the ones that are supposed to be operating. So, for example, in your pancreas, you might have cells that are operating to make glucagon or cells that are operating to make insulin and the insulin producing cells have their glucagon genes switched off uh, and the genes for making myosin and actin and hair and skin and, and all the rest of the sorts of tissues we've got. So methylation is a, in sort of a natural phenomenon and I think the uh, what's being investigated now is how uh, methylation may be involved in perhaps switching off genes that should be on. So perhaps if you've got a gene that is causing you know regulation of cell division and you've switched it off so you've got uncontrolled cell division then we've got a problem because that's going to cause a tumor so we've got methylation like a switch prevents the genes being uh, tra being transcription being transcribed I can't talk and write at the same time, you will have realised that. So it prevents the um, transcription or it prevents the genes being transcribed and therefore it's sort of switching off, if you like, protein synthesis. In cells where, you know, and usually this is a natural phenomenon. Uh, the other one we've got is uh, acetylation. <coughs> and this tends to be acetylation of cystones. So these are acetyl groups. I'm going to put in DNA as well, because so, I don't think it would matter much. If you were reading the information, it will tell you what it's attaching to. And what these do, acetyl groups, they loosen uh, the DNA from the histones. So they're actually making it wound slightly less tightly, and that makes you have more transcription. So the looser it is, the better the transcription is in the chromatin. So again, just to go back to Hank, he refers to that as being like a volume knob. So you could have some acetyl groups and they loosen it a bit and you could have more and they would loosen it some more and they more and they would loosen it some more and the more loose it is, the more transcription. Now obviously those two things, it can go hand in hand because methylation um, can prevent acetylation and therefore the uh, DNA would remain closely bound To the histone, and if it's closely bound, then we're going to get you know no, no transcription. So you know, normal cells, this is going to act like a regulator, so that you you know, initially when you need a protein, you might need quite a lot of it, and gradually you'll need less of it, and you would to tighten up the tighten up the DNA around the histones to get less transcription. So it, these are sort of natural ways of controlling it. And what particularly interests scientists is, uh, first of all, they're sort of, the, the fact that we didn't think that they were inheritable. Um, so, you know, a, a methylation switch that has switched off a control gene for, say, ad, ad, you know, addiction, so that gene is now switched on and it shouldn't be, you know, that might be causing issues for people. So there, there's sort of health related issues to this and particularly in the field of cancer research, so really quite interesting. And I did think, because obviously you don't want your genes switched off when you're a zygote, that the, all, these, all this methylation was stripped off the genome before it landed in, in gamete development. And they now think that possibly it isn't. So, um, interesting and it will get more interesting uh, during your lifetimes I'm absolutely certain. <laughs>